They did it, everyone. Today, AMD released the motherload. We're talking Ryzen 8000G desktop APUs, their performance, new CPUs, AM4 CPUs, a new GPU, and more. Now, in this video, I'll be going over their APUs and CPUs with a separate video on their GPU dropping today as well. So I've got a lot to cover, and some of it is completely insane. Welcome, everyone, to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, man. First up for today, while I know AMD's already announced their notebook Ryzen 8040 series, they actually told us a couple new things that are really interesting. And really quickly, I do want to note, you'll notice the ugly watermark all across this. Unfortunately, AMD hasn't removed this watermark by the time that I'm recording this video. That is going to be going out after the embargo, but they just haven't taken this off yet, so please bear with me with that. Either way, don't forget that the 8040 series is effectively the 7040 series with an MPU for AI. So with that in mind, what's really interesting is that AMD actually got a chance to compare it to Intel's newest Meteor Lake CPU. As you can see, this is the Ryzen 7 8840U with a Radeon 780M. Don't forget that the 780M was already out in the last gen series of CPUs, so it's effectively the same, and it's up against the Core Ultra 7 155H, and don't forget here that this is supposed to be a huge deal for Intel's iGPU. It's with Arc graphics, it's supposed to be this really big jump in performance, and yet it's still losing to the Radeon 780M. Don't forget that I recently covered a story that more or less suggested that Intel's new Meteor Lake actually has an IPC regression when compared to their last gen CPUs. And sure, you can raise the clocks and things like that, but we're talking at a clock for clock basis, it had worse IPC, at least in the benchmark that they tested it. Well, now it's worse in gaming, and at least according to AMD, it's or less efficient. Basically, Intel's Meteor Lake seriously looks to be a dud. Now here comes the really interesting stuff, but before I get to that, the new year is here, so start it off right by learning a new skill, like coding or large language models that power AI, or even things like learning how to make your own search engine. You can do that and more with this video sponsor. Brilliant, the one place I trust to learn computer science. But the best thing about Brilliant isn't really what they teach, but how they teach it, which is by getting you to do it yourself with these fun and actually interesting puzzles. See, Brilliant was made to teach the sim field, so they teach it right. And with that, they actually have something for everyone. Whether you're a complete beginner or you already have a career in STEM, there's a course for you. So don't put it off any longer, because Brilliant is offering my viewers a 30-day free trial when you visit Brilliant brilliant.org slash gamermelt. Plus, when you sign up at brilliant.org slash gamermelt, you'll get 20% off their premium membership for life. This is one incredible deal. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermelt. Now back to the story, as you can see right here, the long rumored Ryzen 8000G series processors is real. Andy officially announced those, and man, are they interesting. Starting things off, as you can see right here, we have specs, and you'll likely notice pretty quickly that the leaks we've been seeing have been incredibly accurate. So if you'd like to be one of the first to learn about new PC hardware, make sure you subscribe to GamerMelt. Either way, starting things off, we actually have the much lower end Ryzen 3 8300G. This is a 4-core, 8-thread CPU. All of these do come with a 65-watt TDP. Then we have a Ryzen 5 8500G. This also comes with a Radeon 740M, 6-core, 12-thread CPU, up to 5 gigahertz boost clock, once again, 65 watt TDP, 22 megabytes of cache. Next, we get into the really good stuff. We have the Ryzen 5 8600G, six core, 12 thread CPU, up to five gigahertz boost, but with the Radeon 760M. Remember that this bad boy comes with eight RDNA 3 CUs. Finally, we have the Ryzen 7, the big daddy, 8700G, up to 5.1 GHz max boost clock, 8 core, 16 thread CPU with a 780M, and that is a 12 CU iGPU. And you'll notice right here it says availability is January 31st for all of these APUs. Moving on, you'll notice that they claim this is the world's first desktop processor with a dedicated AI engine. 
meaning, and this is why they are called the 8000 series instead of 7000 like we originally thought, because these come with an NPU, the XDNA, that gets up to 39 teflops of total processing power for AI. So these have Ryzen AI baked in. And I will say that I wasn't really sure when AMD initially announced Ryzen AI just how exactly it would benefit PC users, but I will say that they do give some examples. They have 50 plus features offered by Adobe. It says, you can see digital editing tools aimed at enhancing imagery and audio through automated processes, object selection, neural filters, and content aware functionalities. Now, from what I understand, they do already have this running in the cloud and things like that, but now you can actually run this locally with Ryzen AI. So I will say that they do have quite a bit of features that you can use with their MPU, but Forget about the MPU, let's talk about gaming. Oh, and I'll have affiliate links down in the description below for when they're released. It doesn't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. And here's where things get really interesting. Because these bad boys come with RDNA 3, that means they're able to get all the new kind of technologies that have been coming out lately, including HyperRx and Fluid Motion Frames. Remember that Fluid Motion Frames is effectively AMD's driver-based frame generation. So as long as you have a supported GPU, you can get frame generation in just about every game. And this also works on the 780M that comes in their 8000G iGPUs. As you can see right here, so this is with all Adrenaline Driver features off, but this is with uh, HyperRx, which is where it automatically turns on quite a few features that AMD suggests, including fluid motion frames and you can see that they get some massive performance jumps here so Baldur's Gate 3 goes from 58 FPS to 90 Liza P 55 to 96 now one obvious issue with frame generation though all of this isn't completely coming from frame generation because there is other technology and hyper rx besides that but obviously a lot of it is so one issue with using that with much lower FPS is going to be that you're also going to up latency. Now I will say that HyperRx does come with some latency reducing technology, so we'll really have to try this out, but it definitely is interesting to see an iGPU getting numbers like this. I mean, this is 1080p. Yeah, it's low detail, but we're talking full HD. And let's pretend that you don't want to turn all this on. You can still probably get decent frame rate in these brand new games if you just lower it down to 720p. Moving on, you can see what I'm talking about here. Even Cyberpunk is able to get over 60 FPS, although I'm fairly certain that it's with this turned on. You know, you can see Dota 2, 165 FPS, F1 2022, 120, Metro Exodus, Borderlands 3 getting almost 100 FPS. And remember, this is all with an integrated GPU. Next up, and this is where things get a little bit confusing, you'll see that it is actually comparing it to a 13,400F with a GeForce 1650. So basically that means this can compete with a GTX 1650, though I will say that is with frame generation, things like that turned on. I did confirm that with AMD, but still not bad at all. And what they're trying to say is, okay, this is $410 for both of these, and it's gonna be less for the 8700G. Really quickly to jump in here, AMD just sent over the pricing for their 8000G APUs, and it is as follows. The 8700G is $329, the 8600G is $229, and the 8500G is $179. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm really happy with that price. As I just showed you, getting something similar from Intel costs quite a bit more. With that said, it of course does require FSR, but as I'll show you in just a second, that 8000G CPU is quite a bit better in productivity as well. But yeah, I think this is really good. And of course, once again, this is seriously impressive because we are talking an integrated GPU. And we can actually see whenever it comes to the CPU with productivity workloads, it does significantly better when compared to the 13,400. F. Once again, this is taking these and that price and the 8700G is going to be quite a bit less than that, but it doesn't need the separate GTX 1650, yet it can beat it in these productivity workloads as well as do very well against it in gaming. And then AMD actually did something pretty interesting. You can see that they actually paired it with a Radeon 7900 XTX and basically what they're trying to say is with the integrated GPU, it's great, but if you later want to upgrade with a discrete GPU, it can handle that. It's not gonna hold that discrete GPU back or anything like that. 
Grand Theft Auto 5, you can see really high frame rates all across here that if the CPU was really holding it back, these numbers wouldn't be anywhere near here. So very interesting when it comes to the Ryzen 8000G desktop APUs, but AMD didn't stop there. Next up, and once again, something that I've covered in leaks before, we have the Ryzen 7 5700X3D. This is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU. It's basically a 5800X3D with slightly lower clocks. Well, we're talking quite a bit, actually. This is only up to 4.1 GHz max boost and up to 3.0 GHz base. And then it has a 105 watt TDP. You can see right here, comparing it to the 13600K, so this is going to be $249. And honestly, I will say not a bad price at all, given where the 5800X3D is. But you can see right here that it does better than the 13600K at the same price. Moving on, we have the Ryzen 7 5700. And this is actually something that's been available with system integrators. So only if you purchase the system with this in it could you get it. But now they're selling it for the DIY market. 8 cores, 16 thread, up to 4.6 GHz max boost, up to 3.7 GHz base, and a 65 watt TDP. Finally, we have these two, once again, not at all a surprise if you follow GamerMelt, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon. Either way, we have the Ryzen 5 5600 GT and Ryzen 5 5500 GT, so these are basically slightly upgraded G models meaning it does come with the integrated Radeon graphics. So you have the 5600 GT, just like the 5600 G, but a little bit better. We actually have some performance right here. You can see 5600 GT is slightly better than the regular 5600 G, and then the 5500 GT is slightly better still than the 5600 G. Finally, we have pricing and availability, and all of these are also gonna be available January 31st, the 5700 XT, once again, is $249. The 5700 is 175. The 5600 GT is 140. And the 5500 GT is 125. Basically, AMD is going all out. So while that does it for today, what out of all of these announcements has been your favorite? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day.